Hi, Dan here at Composer's Edition, where we are celebrating piano trios. And I thought it'd be a great idea to get in one of our leading piano trios, the Fidelio Trio. And uh, by way of introduction, in case you haven't heard of them, uh, they have many highly praised albums, including music by Ravel and Sansons, uh, Michael Nyman and Michael Zev Gordon. And the key focus of the trio's work has always been contemporary repertoire, their dedication to which makes them one of the foremost interpreters of music today, often based on close working relationships with composers, including our own Joe Cutler, Ed Bennett, Rob Fockens, Rob Keeley, and more. Indeed, they have played a vital role in the development of the string piano trio repertoire and work for, uh, with many younger composers, as well as holding residencies at conservatoires across the UK, Ireland, and beyond. So welcome to Dara, Mary, and Tim. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Thank you. Hi, thank you for sparing some time out of your rehearsal schedule to have a quick chat with me. And I thought I might ask uh, Mary first, um, just thinking about the uh, piano trio and the sort of history. I mean, it's a staple part of the Western classical canon. Um, to me, it seems one of your strengths is in exploring a certain continuity uh, between this, uh, in this very established grouping whether you're performing Beethoven, Ravel, or Linda Catlin Smith. I'm wondering if you're looking at these composers or approaching their work from a similar vantage point, or you, do you start from different positions depending on historical context? That's a fantastic question, Dan. <laughs> I'm not sure that the answer I will give would be the same answer that any other ensemble would give. But I think from our perspective, as well as composition being this living and continuous um, thing in our world, um, from our perspective as players individually and collectively, we're also always developing and learning and changing. And, um, you know, we're, we also are not standing still, I don't think. It's what keeps us going. Um, so I suppose with that, the application then to to any new piece whether it's a Beethoven trio that you're learning for the first time or Brahms or Amy Beach which we're playing tomorrow or a piece um a, a fairly recent piece that we get hold of or a piece that's that's written for us and we're working with the composer on that I think we always want to push ourselves to the you know the best understanding like you said historically when something is written you know, is really important. What else was happening? Um, I suppose you might look at things a bit more locally in a, in a composition scene, you know, if a piece is being written in 2023, but it still has a place, everything has a context. So it's it's those contexts and also our own personal histories as players, I think. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's bringing to a sort of confluence of different influences that come together in the moment. Yeah, I can turn to you, Dara, and uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's clear to me that you put a lot of thought into the programming, finding connections between uh, different works, for maybe from different times and places. So, how are you? How are you finding those? Can what are those connections, and how are you how are you coming across them? Well, programming is you know an art in its own in itself, but you know. 20 years ago, when we first met you, um, you know, when we were all involved with the BMIC Cutting Edge series um, at the warehouse, you know, we did a programme one night uh, that included Sharino and Michael Nyman, which was like back then shock horror, you know, you right. know. In the UK new music scene that was just both not allowed and also disgusting but you know thankfully <laughs> those days are long gone and people are much more open I suppose Catholic in their thinking about what is a program so for me it's kind of like a really good really good meal you know and there has to be so many different ingredients in it and a gig that really should have a contour and shape you know it should have you know obviously different piercings and different kind of color episodes, but it all should have different tactilities to the, each different piece. So, you know, if every piece was just a minimalist style or every piece was just extended techniques or every piece was just experimental music, uh, you know, that really would get boring for me, you know, but there needs to be a thread through all of these flavors. So, you know, for instance, you know, 
John White made these brilliant sati arrangements for us a number of years ago. And, you know, for me, he's kind of, kind of the godfather of experimental music. So sati going into some kind of cage-like world or music from there in America would make real sense to me in as much as playing Lachenmann. But uh, Lachenmann, I know, for instance, he loves uh, the late romantic music like of Richard Strauss. So maybe not there isn't a Richard Strauss trio, but if there was another piece like that, you know, these are all threads that you are thinking about. So, yeah, programming, programming is like a very fine meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and it's based obviously on a lot of uh, detailed understanding of the pieces and the feel for the feel for those works. Yeah, and as Mary said, our connection to them as well, you know, because we you know, have relationships with a lot of these composers. So we're friends with them. So we know what they enjoy. And it's what what makes the friendship is what we enjoy and enjoy together. Right. Yeah. And maybe that's and there's something I wanted to ask you, Tim, which perhaps related to that. And that's I mean, I'm I'm often amazed by your ability uh, to learn so much new music with all these different styles and all the idiosyncrasies of of different composers' works. I'm wondering how it is you, you, know, you go about learning unfamiliar kind of way, uh, unfamiliar composers' works. Yeah, um, well, I mean, there's there's a huge variety of, of music being, being written these days. So some music is gonna be more approachable than, than others, I guess. But yeah, I mean, some some music we, we, we work on is, uh, it sounds quite foreign, you know, and, and and uses techniques which are which are quite unusual or un, unfamiliar, you know. So, I mean, what what works for me? I don't know about you guys, but is 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 that you just have to spend time with 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 the new music just to become familiar with it, but not too much time <clears throat> because it's important. It's important, I think, not to. <laughs> it's, how can I put this tactfully? It's quite easy to sort of build up a kind of uh, alienation from the music if you're not, you know, if you, if you feel that it's it's you're not making headway. But what works for me is just to sort of say, spend an hour a day or something like that on that, just just getting used to the techniques, getting used to the music, and then leave it, and then come back to it, and then over time you gradually it becomes part of your kind of into your system. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah. So it's quite a dynamic process. You're trying to, you know, you're sort of wrestling with it a bit and uh, trying to find your your place with it. And uh, when you haven't got the whole history of the piece as you would with, you know. Um... Another thing which, uh, so I was just thinking of uh, a, a piece which I which isn't for trio but for for solo cello by Zenakis. Um, there's there's a passage in that which I, I you know I, well when I first looked at it I thought that is totally unplayable and then about four or five years later I looked at it again and I said it's totally unplayable mm -hmm. and it, it it is sometimes sometimes composers I think really push push the envelope and and try to write things which are which are incredibly complex and and you have to somehow kind of get close to what what they want so th there's a kind of overlap between preparation and really kind of just trying to sort things out and then just allowing yourself just to almost kind of freely improvise on the basis of of what they've set down okay yeah yeah but trying to get the spirit of it as much as really maybe yeah. even as much as the notes themselves is to get the expression right as you as yeah. goes into what yeah, I'm always telling my you know I always tell my students or when I used to teach you know composers whether it's Beethoven and Mendelssohn or you know as you mentioned our own Joe Cutler they're not really interested about oh the fact that we've only got five you know four or five notes on any string and then we've got a cross to the next string or Mary has to do certain things we've only got five fingers in each hand they don't see music in that kind of technical facility and that's a vital part of understanding a new piece you know that you don't look at it across the fingerings and bowings you got to get way beyond that immediately yeah yeah um mary can i ask um you about the i know you do a uh, chamber music festival winter chamber music festival in in dublin which has been running for quite a while how long has that been going and uh 
what are your plans for the future for that? Yeah, so it's a great privilege to have a, a festival hosted in a beautiful chamber music space, uh, in a really old library, um, and with a great support team uh, in terms of a local community group who are very, you know, um, concerned with, um, you know, engaging with their communities, putting things on, getting music out to people. It's not just music, they have lots of artistic uh, projects. But we had a residency at St. Patrick's College, which is uh, now part of Dublin City University. Um, and uh, that was from 2012 to 15. Uh, it was a really forward looking residency. The Arts Council of Ireland uh, also partly funded it and supported it. Three years is quite different to one term or one visit. Um, mm -hmm. And we worked with uh, students, very much with a focus on people doing music degrees and also people training to be teachers. So there is that extension, you know, of our, our reach. Um, concerts, premieres, commissions, composition workshops, community groups, youth orchestras, everything, you know, that you could think of. So out of that grew this winter festival, which happens the last weekend of November every year from Friday to Sunday. And uh, we generally um, commission new work as part of that as well. There have been a lot of new trios by Irish composers that have come from this, which we then continue to play all over the world. So it's a fantastic focus for us at the end of the year. Um, this year, actually, I think we're doing a focus on uh, works that we have commissioned um, since 2012 when we started that residency. So, you know, we, we're able, to, we are able to take different vantage points with the programming and also are able to invite, um, you know, people that we really would like to play chamber music with in bigger bigger settings so um or slightly different arrangements of the trio so yeah it's it's a real privilege as i say yeah and i guess you know it gives you a perhaps a rarer chance to do a, a lot of programming yourself and you know according to what you want to do and you know what your what your flow is at the moment i i thought i'd like to just ask you all um as a last question to say in a sentence if you can uh what makes a good work for piano trio so uh that starting with dara what makes a work a good work for a piano trio well a composer that you know their ear hears this incredibly wide timbre of possibilities and that they've studied and are aware of all of the trios that have come from before now and then make something really original and new still with it. Mm. Mary? And to build on that, uh, Dara used the word timbre, but um, the orchestration possibilities of the trio, so how the piano and the strings are used together separately in pairs. Um, yeah, and the range, the, you know, the incredible range of pitch that is available as well. Great, and Tim? Oh, I don't know how to add that. I just want to hear a piece of great music, I guess. <laughs> and we played an arrangement of uh, Debussy's La Mer by um, uh, Sally, Sorry, Beamish. Sally Beamish. And, uh, you know, it wasn't written for piano trio, but it was just amazing music. And it's just wonderful to be part of that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to you know, finish on... Uh, uh, expression of joy in what you in what you do, the music that you play. Thanks ever so much for taking some time out to, uh, chatting with me today, and uh, good luck with your concert tomorrow and uh, and your the rest of the year with your program. Thanks, Thanks so very much, Dan. Dan. Thanks. Good. Well done. Great. Brilliant.